Good morning, church. It's Monday morning. Take your Bibles and go to the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter number 5, as we discuss the issue of sexual immorality and how that if we do not repent, we shall perish. If we don't repent as a nation, we're going to perish. Our culture is inundated with sexual immorality, and it's fueled by pornography. Now, for many years, pornography has been around. It was around during the time of the, the Roman Empire, obviously, and even before that. There's been all kinds of perversions where people would make statues or they would make uh, pictures or draw pictures. But it has become a part of our culture uh, through the media, through movies, uh, what we call soft porn, women dressing up so desirable to cause men to lust in their hearts and men lusting in their hearts. But then it became even hardcore sort of things. And now, of course, we've got books and magazines. We, we've got anything on the internet you want to watch. It is just rampant in America. But I want you to notice that Jesus says that even if you don't commit adultery or sexual immorality, just to look at a woman, whether it is a movie or whether it's in a magazine or whether it's on the internet, uh, page uh, to look for at a woman or a woman to look at a man to lust after them is wicked. It's sinful. It's the same as the act itself because the act of adultery begins in the heart. Jesus said it this way in the Sermon on the Mount, verse 27. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that those who look at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery in her heart, with her in his heart. Now, he goes on to say, this is such an issue, this is such an important issue, a vital issue, that it's if your right eye causes you to stumble, to sin, pluck it out, get rid of it. If your hand, your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. In other words, he says, you need to do whatever is necessary to deliver yourself from that sort of sinfulness. So you say, does Jesus literally mean that? He goes ahead and says, wouldn't it be better for you to go into heaven with one eye, because you're going to get a new body anyway, than to go into hell with both eyes? If you can't put a stop to this, then you need to do whatever is extreme, which means get rid of the TV. Don't go to movies at all. I rarely ever go to a movie. If it is, it's usually a, a movie like Star Wars or something. That's probably the last one I went to was not, not the newer ones, but the older Star Wars ones. I don't go to a movies very often, but uh, stay away from those things. Listen to what Charles Stanley says about pornography. And again, pornography comes from the word pornea, which is the Greek word that is used many times in the Bible for sexual immorality. So it's sexual immorality, graph, pornography, graph, has to do with picture or words, a graft. And so it's pictures of, of uh, women or men in sexual immorality or that stirs up lust. And, and we have that rampant today. Charles Stanley says, porn is not just a money-making business. It is a very shrewd, effective way to destroy this country. History reveals that nations who have given themselves over to sensuality have been destroyed. Pornography, sensuality, lesbianism, homosexuality divide the mind and dull the conscience of men and women. If we keep pushing drugs, sex, and pornography, we will absolutely anesthetize ourselves into oblivion. This is a major, major issue, and it, for, it, and, it, and it fuels much of the sexual immorality, adultery. Those who are involved in sexual immorality and adultery are usually also involved in pornography. And many people who go to church are involved in pornography, even if they're not committing the actual physical act of, of fornication or adultery or homosexuality. It's being fueled in their hearts to be lusting after these things. Many of you know who Donald Wildman is, the American Family Association. In his case against pornography, uh, in 1986, he wrote this. So this is actually dated, and it hasn't changed. But here are some of the things he lists in that. 
that there was an FBI report that says that over 5,000 people murdered by recreational killers, most of them said to the FBI and told them that their desire to kill somebody just, just out of the blue for recreation was because of pornography. It was fueled, fueled by pornography. Columnist Jack Anderson uh, the Mich wrote in his article that the Michigan State Police found that porn is used or imitated in 41% of sex crimes they investigate. So a lot of the acts of pedophilia, rape, uh, all these things are fueled by what they saw in a magazine or uh, on screen, uh, that they are trying to imitate those things. Dr. Victor B. Klein, University of Utah a psychologist says, that the rape rate in the United States has increased by more than 700% since 1933. Now remember, this was written in 1986, so it's even worse today. His study shows a direct link between rapes and uh, pornography. Roger Miller, a retired uh, California lawman, said uh, when they searched homes of sex criminals, uh, that they suspected of sex crimes, that almost every time they found porn. Today, that's the same is true. I mean, again, it, nothing's changed. Uh, sex, uh, they, they've got magazines of sexual immorality, or it's on their internet now. It's so easy to get on the internet that whenever someone is accused of uh, pedophilia, usually you're going to find on their computer uh, child pornography. Christopher Dodd, who was, used to be a senator from uh, Connecticut, said, and I quote, by conservative estimates, a child is sexually molested every two minutes. Much of this is fueled by pornography. That's in an article uh, that was on, on NBC News. Um, many, many other things. Serial killers, uh, Henry Lee Lucas and Gary Wayne Bishop, as well as many others, blame pornography for fueling their desire to kill. They were serial killers. FBI said of the 36 convicted serial killers, 81% said that the biggest sexual interest was reading and watching pornographic materials. Now this comes from the Focus on the Family. This is a different study. But in the Focus on the Family, did a commissioned a study said that 20%, that is one in five adults, visit sexually oriented, oriented uh, websites regularly. One in 10, that is 10% of church attenders are visiting regularly. So that means one in 10, if you're an average church, one in 10 of the people that, that are in church on a given Sunday are watching pornography on the internet. Focus on the Family receives over 100 calls, letters, and emails a month about uh, pornography-related issues. It is just running rampant. It's a billion-dollar industry. It's nothing for women to dress down as far as they can, even if it's soft porn. Uh, I mean, to wear bathing suits and to model bathing suits in public that show every aspect of the body as almost uh, leaves very little to the imagination. We got beaches where, again, that's porn pornography in a sense because you're you're wearing things to cause people to lust in their heart. You're wanting people to look at you and to lust and to desire you. And so all these things are rampant in our society. And if we as a church and as people don't do something to let folks know it's wrong, it's, it's, you've got to stay away from these things, then our culture has no hope whatsoever. Let's pray together. Father, we are a culture inundated with sexual immorality. We recognize that. And for the most part, the church is part of the problem. We have not been salt and we have not been light. We've allowed the culture to go to hell while we in our churches fussed over the, the color of carpets. And Father, we just pray that you'd forgive us for that, cleanse us, help us to take your word and with love uh, share the truth in this culture that we might call it to repentance. For we know, Father, unless we repent, we're going to perish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.